Good day, everyone. We are going to leave some more two minutes for everybody to join because we have full class today. Good day, everyone. Welcome to this webinar on Supply Chain Certification Standard 2020. Thank you so much for joining us. We have a lot of requests to join, and we are almost 500 people joining the webinar, so thank you so much. It's, more, it's very appreciated from our side. So my name is Lilian garcia Gedo. I'm the Assurance Manager from Europe, and I'm part of the team on the RSPO Secretariat that uh, coordinate the revision of the supply chain certification documents. In the line with me, you can you will find Inke van der Slaus, the head of European operations, Amina Ann, head of certification, and Rosita Abkani, supply chain manager. Some practicalities before giving the floor to our our mate Andreas. Knull from FONAP, from the German Forum of Sustainable Palm Oil. Some practicalities first. So you are all unmute to avoid the background noise and uh, people speaking at the same time. But you can use, please, the in the panel, you can see the a section with questions. Then you can place your question there and my colleagues will address them. If not all the questions are answered, don't worry, we will prepare like a like, um, document with all of the questions asked and also all the answers. So we will share that when, when the webinar finishes. 
Also, this recording of the webinar will be shared as well as the PPT. And given the, the high expectation that this webinar created among the RSPO members, just to inform that we have decided after this morning one that we will, uh, we will de develop new webinars for different regions, for example, for uh, in Bahasa, Indonesia, and Bahasa, Malaysia, and also from the area of uh, India, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Bangladesh, all this kind of, all, all, that, all that region also. So more announcement of webinars will come up. So I really hope everybody can hear me. In the morning, we have some problems, especially the people calling in from Asia. So yeah, I really hope you don't lose the audio at some point. Now, please, Andrea, you can uh, introduce yourself. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Lilian. Ja, ein herzliches Willkommen auch von unserer Seite vom Forum Nachhaltiges Palmöl. Mein Name ist Andreas Knöll. Ich bin hier als Generalsekretär des FONAP tätig und der besondere Mehrwert, der diese gemeinsame Veranstaltung mit dem ASPO heute bietet, ist eben, dass Sie als Teilnehmer Ihre Fragen auch gerne in Deutsch stellen können in der entsprechenden von Lilian eben angebotenen Weise. Und die werden dann einfach gesammelt und am Ende gibt es die Q&A-Session, in der wir die dann ja aufbereitet, hoffentlich auch alle umfänglich beantworten können. Also bitte machen Sie von dieser Möglichkeit Gebrauch. Ansonsten, ja, erstmal herzlich willkommen zu diesem doch sehr wichtigen Webinar. Wie äh, von Lilian schon gesagt, heute Morgen waren es über 500, jetzt ist die äh, Obergrenze auch erreicht in diesem. Es wird also weitere Webinare geben. Viel Spaß zunächst und bis nachher. Thank you very much, Lilian. Thank you, Andrea. Okay, so let's just, let's get started. So the main goal of this uh, webinar is to inform on the main change of the RSPO Supply Chain Certification Standard 2020, which was endorsed in February 2020. So, but then we have also another point that we would like to share with you at this, uh, in this given moment. So we will have little updates from RSPO Secretariat. We will also, for those of you that are new in the, in the, uh, in the RSPO world, in the supply chain certification world, we will have a little introduction what it is, why, why we have it, what it means, and to who it's applicable. Then we will dig in in the review process of the versions 2020 of the supply chain certification standard. And we will go for the main changes in the same document, in the standard, but also the supply chain certification requirements for meals that have been now updated in the P and C principal criteria 2018. Little, little, very briefly mention of the main changes of the supply chain certification systems document because this doesn't apply completely to the organization seeking for supply chain certification, but to the CVs certification bodies. And at the end, we will have uh, two slides about cell responsibility because we understood that it creates some confusion of what it is, what it means. At the end of the session, as I said, there will be a Q&A where my colleagues can take the floor and uh, do a summary of all the questions that have been asked or if there is a common misconception or misunderstanding or something to, to explain from our side, this will be the moment. So first, some updates from our side. For those members of RSPO that are eligible to present the ACOP 2019, ACOP stands for Annual Communication and Progress. The deadline has been extended to the 5th of June 2020, 24 hours GMT plus 8. Please keep this into account. GMT plus 8, in Europe we are GMT plus 2. Kind reminder, these ones, these the RSPO member that needs to, to submit the ACOP 2019 are the affiliate and the ordinary members. The second, the second bullet point. So unfortunately, as you know, because of the COVID situation, we had to postpone our annual event in, here in Europe. We call it Sustainable Palm Oil Dialogue. It is an event where three organizations, European Palm Oil Alliance, the POA, IDH and RSPO joined together to do a physical event. It was scheduled on the 23rd of June in Frankfurt, Germany, but we had to postpone it to the 2nd of September. And still we are in a discussion if we have to, if we can do a live event or we have to go for a virtual event or a mixture of both. We will see and we will inform you through any announcement. 
I'm delighted also to inform that we have a chief executive officer per 1st of May. Her name is Ms. Beverly Posma. And also that our colleague Dan Stretchy has become the Global Outreach and Engagement Director. So very happy to have these two new positions in place in RSPO. And the last point, as you may know, that, that we have done an announcement about the COVID-19 situation. You can find the link in the, in the slide so you can see the exact test. But just a reminder, the thing is that if you are an organization that you need to go for an audit, there is the option for your auditor to go to do the audit on site or remotely, given that there are there are uh, enough evidences that the auditor cannot go beyond site. Or the auditor, the CV, can ask for a license extension. So the or here is important. It is or on, or an on site or remote audit or the license extensions. Both things cannot happen. You cannot have the remote C CC audit and at the same time your CV can ask for a license extension. This is not allowed, it's not, it's not going to be granted either. Just we pass to the little introduction. Well, here you can see what a very normal, very simple supply chain for palm oil is. So everything started somewhere in the, in the tropics with a plantation of uh, oil palm. Then normally there is a mill close by where you obtain the CPO, the crude palm oil. There is a collection port normally in the country of origin. Most likely there is an intercontinental transportation, another collection port in the country of uh, uh, arrival. Then you have the refinery, which create ingredients that can, can be created by a product or consumer manufacturer to do margarine, for example, or cookies. This is a typical supply chain, right? And here is more schematic. So it's the same. We have, if you start with me, with the upper charcoal, we have the plantation and the small holders, then we have a mill, a crusher. There is also a trader in the middle between the mill crusher and the refinery, then the ingredient manufacturer who can give the product to a distributor, who bring it to the, manu into the manufacturer and the retailer. So this scheme is very important because here we see all the typical actors of a supply chain. And here we are going to identify who is eligible of what. So if you see plantations and smallholders and mill, mill, they have a circle in blue. This means that these two actors are eligible to be RSPO principle and criteria certified. Let me clarify that RSPO has two certification systems. One is applicable to the production of sustainable palm oil in the, in the ground, in the plantation and in the mills. And the other one is the supply chain certification that is it applicable to all the other supply chain actors. So why is this necessary, this supply chain certification? Well, because once the plantation and the mill, they are certified PNC, we need to guarantee the chain of custody of these RSPO certified products. Every single actor of the supply chain in Orange, which are the ones that they are eligible to get supply chain certification, they must be verified, meaning that they must be audited and certified. One important thing I want to mention, if you see in the mill, they have both of them. It has the blue, the blue circle, but also the orange circle. This is because if the mill has plantation associated, then they are eligible for PNC. If a mill has not associated plantation, then is eligible for supply chain certification. And it is considered an independent mill. Therefore, the supply chain certification starts in the independent mill it goes all the way to crushers, refinery, and ingredients, and end product manufacturer. So the supply chain certification ends in the final product manufacturer. After the final product manufacturer, the supply chain certification is not needed. That's why retailer, which is in gray, is this circle over here is exempt. Also, who else is exempt is also in gray. These are traders and distributors. 
traders and distributors that fall into the definition of the supply chain certification standard. And I'm going to stop here to explain what is a trader as per the definition of the supply chain certification standard. It's a participant that takes legal ownership but doesn't physically handle. For physically handle, we understand receipt, storage, dispatch, physical transformation, repack, and relabel. For distributor, and I again refer to the to the definition in the supply chain certification standard, are participants that they take that take legal ownership, they can store products, but they do not unpack, repack, or relabel. So traders and distributors that fall into the definition I just explained, those bars are exempted to get supply chain certification. That's why they are in gray. All the rest, all the orange ones, when they want to make a claim that they use RSPO certified material and that, and that they are certified, then they need to have a supply chain certification to say so. And the supply chain certification, it works for four supply chain models. The three of them, the first three of them, identity preserved, IP, segregated, SG, and mass balance MB are physical supply chain models, meaning that it, it needs to be a physical supply chain. The last one I like to call it, uh, to me, is more like a virtual trade option, and it's called RS RSPO credit or book and click model. Book and claim model. Then let's pass to the review process, how this uh, started for the revision of the standard and system, but specifically the standards 2020. So it started one year ago in April 2019. As I said, the four of us from Secretariat, we were coordinating, but uh, we had to create a supply chain certification task force where we had 29 representatives that brought all their expertise and their help to review, integrate, and update the supply chain certification standard document. So these 29 representatives, they were coming from the different stakeholders. We had growers, NGOs, we had consumer good manufacturers, certification bodies, retailers, and professional and traders. And did make that, the, that the, during the meeting we had, the conversation and the discussions were taking all the points of view, which enriched, enriched the process. In this link, you can find a specific information of the task force, who was uh, involved in it, also the minutes, the drafts, etc. Then, after the last meeting, we, we got a draft, and this draft went for public consultation for 60 days. It started in July, so it, and it finished in September. We had also face-to-face -face consultations in Europe and in Asia. We had also webinars in Spanish and in English with the changes proposed, and we had the CV workshop in Asia and Latin America. After the public consultation, the, the changes were adopted or, or uh, disregard, and then the BOG, the Board of Governors, endorsed the document in February 2020. And this is the document that we are going to check now. There is no need to say that uh, this webinar or this little uh, presentation does not substitute the reading, caref the careful reading of the standard, please, because you really need to understand all the concepts and all the sentences. The new document is this one over here in, uh, with the orange cover page. So as an as a overview of the process of what has changed and what's not, just to mention that in the supply chain certification started in 2020, there are only three modules, module A, B, and C, corresponding to identity preserved, IP, segregated, and mass balance, because these three supply chain models request or require an audit. The module D and E, they were the ones apply, applying to the mills with associated plantations, have been taken out from here, they have been removed, and they have been included in the PNC 2018 with two modules, IP and mass balance. The module F and G of the previous version, 2017, now they are the Annex 2 and 3 of the version 2020, which is multi-site and group certification. And we include 
two new annexes, six and seven, with two new, not new, but they were existing documents, but they were separate documents. And now they are part of the standard as an annex. This is the RSPO rules of oleochemicals and its derivatives and the guidance for food service companies. So now when the auditor goes to the to the your company, if this is applicable to you, it's part of the scope of certification. Important to understand also that, as I said, the book, the Board of Governors of RSPO endorsed this document the 1st of February 2020. And since then, this document is effective, meaning that you can use it today. You can start to implement it today in your, in your uh, site to certify. But also take into account that you have one year grace period, one year transition period, meaning that up to the 1st of, the, of February of 2021, sorry, 31st of January of 2021, you can use the version 2020, 2017. But from 1st of February 2021, the version of 2020 is fully mandatory to implement and to audit. We enter in the different uh, sections of the document. So in the scope, we include this paragraph, which is that the service responsibility requirements that are applicable for those actors with supply chain certification will be included here in this standard, or it will be included in a different stand, in a different document, separate document. In any case, it will be announced. So as you know, in our previous General Assembly in November 2019, the service responsibility requirements were endorsed. This means that the RSPO members need to comply with this service responsibility requirements. What we are doing now there is a working group that has to develop better these requirements in the sense that it has to develop the guidance of implementation, the sanctions, the incentives, how to make this auditable for the auditor, etc. And those one, when those requirements auditable for the audit, for the companies are ready, they will include it here in a different document. That is what it means, this sentence. How to use this document? We have included a clarification. So the module, meaning mass balance segregated or IP, is referring to the product produced by the organization. This means what is IP segregated or mass balance is the product that you manufacture, the product that you are selling to others, not the, the raw material or the product that you buy in. This is important to understand. We have also new definitions, please refer to them all these ones and also we have revised definitions where we have a strength or improve the uh, meaning of this of these uh, terms so for example certificate and license this is an important two important definitions certificate as you well know is has a validity for five years with license it is given after the completion of the external audit annually. There is a connection between these two documents and it is that without a valid license, the certificate is not valid. Meaning that if you do not pass the audit, you don't have a new license in Palm Trace, then your certificate is not valid anymore, even though it had a validity of five years, automatically is not valid. And therefore, with a valid license, you cannot trade product as RSPO certified. And also, we revise the distributor and trader license, so as I explained, so please refer to it. We enter in the section five, the general chain of custody requirements. So once a company has implemented the SCC 2020 standard in their operation, it should be, it should undertake um, internal audits. And these internal audits shall be done by personnel knowledgeable. What this means is that the person should know the standards, should know what means to do an audit, should know what means to do a, a gap assessment, how to identify the corrective measures and how to implement it, basically. Someone that knows how to do their job. Clearly, who 
implement a requirement of the supply chain certification standard cannot be the same person that audit internally that process. Otherwise, you're not going to find any mistake. And then, one non-conformities have been raised. There must be action to correct these non-conformities, and this will be taken in a timely and appropriate manner. About the 5.4.3, it has been amended as follows. So, when you receive RSPO certified material, you need to verify that indeed it is RSPO certified material, meaning that you need to make sure that your supplier is supply chain certified or it has or it has a trade and distributor or distributor license. Otherwise, they cannot trade RSPO product as I explained before. So there are three ways to check this, to do this verification of your supplier. You can check in the RSPO website the supply chain certificate holders, or you can also check the validity of the license of the trader and distributor. These two check-in through the website need to be in a monthly basis. Or the third option, it is quite automatic, automatic, because automatic, sorry, because once you confirm the shipping announcement or the announcements in pound trace means that that person has an active license therefore it can the, that company can trade with RSPO products okay this point the 5.4.5 this is the a paragraph that includes the adoption of the resolution GA 156p which means that for actors, for those participants in the supply chains involved in primary procurement, meaning refineries and traders that buy directly from mills, they should disclose their third party suppliers, meaning they are, these are the supplying mills certified and non certified. The list mill can include different specific information like the mill name, the GPS, the country, etc., and the universal mill list mill code if available. This available means if the mill has a mill code in that list. The list shall be public and it has to be updated every six months. Okay, um, when an independent milk is foreseen that they are going to have an overproduction of the tonnage certified, they need to inform the CV immediately. Likewise, if organizations change their subcontractor activities and they have new contractors, they have to inform the CV in advance prior to conduct its next audit. 5.7.1, as you may know, there are some actors, the ones that are in the bullet A, that when they trade with products of the Annex 1, they need to register different transactions in pound trades in the RSPO IT platform. Well, so we have just done two clarifications about the actors. So mills, this is including the independent mills, meaning the one that they do not have plantation associated. And traders, this include the two kind of traders that we can have, the traders that are certified and the traders that are, are holding a trader license. The traders that are certified, as you may as you may think now, are those ones that they don't comply with the trader definition in the SSC standard. So both traders they need to register their transaction, except when the supplier and the client of this trader register the transac the transactions among them directly. In that case, the trader doesn't need to do it anymore. 5.7.2. These are all the all the, the different transactions that the actors need to register in Pantrace. So we have rephrased all of them. So please refer to them to understand them better now. We, we hope it's more clear now. But as a general thing, we have changed the, uh, the timeline. So it's not anymore up to the SOP, the standard operational procedure of the company but this three months. For example, the shipping announcement is three months after the dispatch of the material. 
confirm of, on shipping announcement is three months of the issue of the shipping announcement. Announcement shall be carried out between three months of the physical delivery of the product. And here, physical delivery refers to the moment that the product leaves my facility. Confirm of announcement, three months of the receipt of the rectified products in my site. And for trace is the same, three months after physical delivery, the same when, when the product leaves my certified site. And for the remove transaction, the volume shall be removed between the license period. 5.8 is about the training program that the organization shall have about the supply chain certification. This it must be subject to annual review. And uh, clearly, we, they have to be also training records that uh, show that this, trainer, this training plan is being implemented. 5.9.3, this is about the records that the organization shall keep regarding the use of the RSPO certified oil product. So they should keep the records of the volume purchase input and the volumes claim output over a period of 12 months, except for the annual surveillance audit one. Why is this? Because the ASA, the annual surveillance audit one, can be conducted between eight to 12 months of the certificate issue date. So it may happen that I do the audit in the, in the month nine. So my inventory on RSPO certified material use is only for nine months. That's why this, this, this exception. And this is exactly the same table that we, uh, the, the same table that the auditor used to request your new license in Pantrace. So now you know exactly how the auditor is going to request you to give you the, to give them the volumes. We pass to the module C, mass balance. We have done a clarification, include a clarification. This is the site shall establish only one accounting system at a time. Of course, there are two, two accounting systems, the continuous and the fixed inventory, but they cannot be implemented at the same time. At the same time, only one accounting system. For the annex two, multi-site certification, two clarifications, the central office, which is also acting as ICS office, is considering a participating site. And central office, which is also a production site, is counted as one site. Annex 3, supply chain group certification. It has been rephrased the explanation and what the group manager shall define, and also the group manager responsibilities. The group manager cannot, shall not issue documents related to the certification without the endorsement by the CV. An example is if a group manager doesn't like the colors that the CV used for the certificate, cannot change it by itself unless the CV endorses that document. Annex 4, who can claim? So we have a, a strength or improve the definition of who can sell credits, RSPO credit sellers, and who can buy credits. RSPO credits buyer. So important to understand that the RSPO credits, one bought, they cannot be resell by the buyer to their client. This means that if I'm a refinery and I buy credits to cover my conventional volumes, I cannot resell those credits to my client. If my client wants to cover again the conventional volumes, my client needs to buy RSPO credit itself. What is allowed, and it always happened, has always happened, is that the RSPO credit can be purchased by the consumer with manufacturer and be claimed on behalf of retailer members or brand owners. But this is claim, this is not resell. We continue in the book and claim. So this is not new, it was already happening, but it was not specifically mentioned. So certified outgrowers are also considered RSPO credit sellers. They can sell RSPO credits. We have included the example of what it means one-to-one -one ratio. 
So when you buy one crate of CPO, CSPO, crude sustainable palm oil, for example, covers one ton of palm sterine. That means the one-to-one -one rate. For oleochemicals and derivatives, please refer to the ratios explained in the RSPO rules for oleochemicals and derivatives, which is now in the Annex 6. Remember, it's not a separate document anymore, it's in the Annex 6. In the 3.9, we include the clarification that when a company, an organization, reads 500 RSPO credits claim in a specific calendar year, they need to engage actively an accredited, of course, CV, the certification body, to conduct the desk audit on Vulcan Claim. This audit is based on a checklist, Vulcan Claim checklist, that you can find in the RSPO website. Annex 5, about the micro user. These are users of less than one ton per year. Micro users have two options, two options to go for supply chain certification. They can go for the individual scheme or the group certification. Annex 6, these are the rules. Before, if you remember, it was a document that it has the content, the rules themselves, and later it has a frequently asked questions. Now, only the content is part of the annexes. The frequently asked questions section is going to keep a separate document that is, it seems like a, it, it is used like a guidance of the implementation of this content of the annex. And right now we are reviewing it. And as soon as it's ready, we will put it in the, in the resources section of the RSPO. Just to mention that uh, these four elements, the conversion factor was changed from 0 0.9 to 0 0.7. And this is important also to mention, so for those of you that are aware of the cross-reference in when mass balance claim transfer, you know that this cross-referencing is allowed between boxes, let's say between sections that are the ones shown in graph 6. This means between the primary oleochemicals or between the secondary oleochemicals. As a general rule, the glycerin was excluded from this cross-referencing because, chemically talking, the chemical formula of glycerin doesn't have a clue, doesn't have a precursor that that make you too easy to identify if they are coming from if the glycerin is coming from PO palm oil or PKO palm kernel oil. The glycerin doesn't have that kind of clue in the chemic in the chemical formula. Therefore. As a general rule, glycerin is not allowed. But in cases where there is clear evidence of this precursor, meaning you know exactly the origin of this glycerin, then this cross-reference uh, mass balance claim, claim transfer is allowed. Important, this is not new, this was always there. It was the question 13 or the frequent asked questions, but now it's a footnote of the document, of the annex. And the annex 7, we just have included requirements related to the food service companies. This was the standard. Now we go to, to see the main changes of the supply chain requirements in PNC. So again, PNC, this is the new, the new version. You can see there is this little um, box in gray. That means that they have the supply chain requirements for meals included. So please refer to the website to get the correct one because probably perhaps you have the previous one without that gray box. So as per uh, RSPOP and C, principles and criteria, all the supply chain requirements, all of them are considered critical indicators. Therefore, in case of non-compliance, this is a major non-conformity. As explained before, PNC 2018, the supply chain requirements that are in this document are applicable to meals which are not independent meals. If we read the independent meal definition, it is a meal with no legal relationship to any specific plantation, including through parent or sister company and taking into consideration the geographical accessibility of the plantation. So in example that I put this morning also, if two meals are in the same country, one of them has an associate plantation, the other has not. But both of them are geographically accessible to the plantation. Both of them are considered not independent mills, and both of them are eligible for PNC 2018. 
also to take into account that all definition in the supply chain certification standard applies to these supply chain requirements in PNC. Just as we uh, mentioned before with the registration of transactions, so for shipping announcement, it has been also delimited to three months after the dispatch of the product, being the dispatch day, the day that you, the bill of landing or the document, the, the sending document. That was the PNC. Now let's just very briefly to look into the main changes of the RSPO supply chain certification systems that again doesn't apply to you directly, but it does to your CV. So indirectly, you can have some uh, effect. And this is the document with the green cover page. So now all the audit team members that goes to audit your site, they need to have the lead auditor status. Also, all the auditors, they need to be registered by the CV, even including the ones that are freelance. And unfortunately, we have to include this this uh, statement or this requirement that is that the lead auditor shall be impartial and shall not so far about treatment to any organization regardless how many years you have been with the same company. In the same uh, line of uh, concept, so we have to uh, strengthen the conflict of interest, we have to include also that the CBM members cannot can be independent to associations or any other organization related to the company to be audited. Independent means also included not to provide advisory and guidance service. And the CV cannot offer certification audit to organization in which they have also done in-house training, conducted internal audit or consultancy services. Very important also, it has been included uh, some rights for the CV and the AV accreditation ban in the contractual documents. This is the right of the CV to conduct an announced audit and the right of the AV accreditation body, in this case ASI, to do an announced, an, an announced assessment. An announced event, auditor assessment, means that the, that the date is not announced previously. But we understand uh, the amount of challenges, logistical challenges that can come with this decision. So it has been decided to allow at least three working days in advance to inform the site of this unannounced event. And of course, the team that is going to conduct, to conduct this unannounced event shall be different to the one that performed the previous certification. Very briefly, also share responsibility. So, <clears throat> sorry. So in 2018, in the um, General Assembly 15, there was this resolution, SG, 60, sorry, that um, stand that, that was specifically asking for members to whom the PNC principle and criteria do not directly, directly apply to participate in the process of developing and implementing shared responsibility elements. So it is understood that is the role of all the RSPO members to share the responsibility to achieve the vision of RSPO, which is to transform the market to make sustainable palm oil the norm. But it is also acknowledgeable, acknowledge that the members, because of their stakeholder nature, category, they have different roles in contributing to this responsibility vision. So this is not new. This was this was always a concept. In the RSPO, in the RSPO core, because in the RSPO code of conduct that all members sign when they join, in the 3.2 point, it is mentioned that members to whom the PNC do not apply directly, they will implement kind of parallel standards relevant to the organization, which cannot be lower than the one of the PNC. So the concept of shared responsibility was always there. Now in this graph, we can see in the middle egg shape. Um, the little topics that we have uh, that the responsibility touch, which is the legal, the ethical, the human rights, worker rights, etc. Then in the orange circles, you can see the different stakeholders category. And in the four corners, you can see the actions or the requirements to, to, to which the stakeholders commit to in this responsibility activity. So for example, going to supply chain actors, we see that they commit to buy and use crude sustainable palm oil, 
for example, they also commit to promote products with CSPO and trademarks. Specifically for the first one, buy and use CSPO, the specific requirement, requirement is for P&T, for processor and traders, they have to increase 2% for first year. For CGM, consumer good manufacturer and retailer, they have to increase 15, 15% for first year. The base year for this increment, increase in the percentage is the 2020 ACOP data. And I invite all of you to go to this link where you can find the, the endorsed document. It was endorsed also in, the, in November 2019 with all the requirements that are applicable to the different stakeholders of RSPO. That was all from my side. We pass to the Q&A part. Please, my colleagues, if you, if you want to summarize or to, to say any comment, feel free to keep the floor, to take the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Lillian. It's Inke van Sluis here. I would like to uh, summarize a few questions uh, that came in through the uh, questions panel. Uh, so one is to uh, repeat the new standard is already out there and you can use it, but you can still use the 2017 version until uh, February next year. So the companies can choose which version uh, to use. They are both uh, um, valid now. Then there was uh, there were a few questions on time extensions. So time extensions are done, and we all understand you have uh, in this COVID situation um, challenges with uh, receiving uh, auditors. So uh, your certification body can do a time extension, and if uh, that is not sufficient to get you through to uh, the physical audit you can have a remote audit scheduled with your certification body. Then uh, there are some questions from uh, uh, participants on the monthly checks and uh, they find it uh, uh, very time consuming and we understand. Uh, I try to explain in the, in the chat box that uh, there's a, already in the 2017 version, there is a requirement to verify that the goods that are coming in are actually RSPO certified, which means that that would be on a batch by batch basis. We've now said that a monthly check uh, uh, is sufficient. If you do palm trace transactions, you don't have to check because the fact that you can uh, do palm trace transactions means that your supplier holds a valid uh, license. Uh, and then there's one question for you, Lillian. Um, um, somebody's asking when the translations of the RSPO supply chain standard will be uh, ready. And I've answered that you're working on that. Mm -hmm. uh, could you perhaps give a timeline uh, when you Correct. expect the first uh, trans translations to be available? So some of them, like for example, German is already done, but we need to, to do the proof reading, which is uh, taking me more time than expected. So, but I, as I expect, expect for um, by May, end of May, it will be all of them for the European languages, meaning Spanish, Polish, French, and German. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So that is uh, all from, from my side. I'm going to quickly ask uh, Amina and Rosita whether they have anything to add. But I also wanted to um, ask that the people who have raised their hands, uh, please uh, keep them there if you have a question. And if there's time, we give you the floor. If that was a mistake, please uh, unraise your hand again. Rosita and Amina, anything additional that you uh, want to raise with this audience? Yeah, we received um, several questions regarding, um, you know, who should be certified, the supplier themselves and so on. So the, the idea is that all members, all supply chain actors within your product has to be uh, within your product supply chain need to be certified in order for your product to claim uh, that you are con uh, you are using uh, or your product containing uh, sustainable palm oil. So that is, I think uh, there was about three to four question about that. 
Uh, so the other question that is um, regularly asked is basically on the remote audit. Yeah. So we said that um, remote audit is basically uh, has is a derogation that we have allowed for supply chain audit. Uh, that is to replace your on-site your on-site audit so that uh, the CB can apply for a new license. Um, uh, for you, but if let's say the on-site uh, the remote audit um, is delayed, uh, and then you wanted to ensure that your license keep is still um, uh, active, so you need to ask for time extension. If you think that your remote audit, if the remote audit is done before the expiry of your license and that your CB can basically submit a new uh, license for you, then you do not need a time extension. So there was a several question about remote audit and time extension, yeah? I think that's all, Inka, from my side. Okay, so for my side, uh, I think uh, there is a few questions about the uh, accounting system, yeah? So uh, for mass balance module, there are two accounting system, which is fixed inventory as well as a continuous uh, inventory, uh, continuous accounting system. Yeah. So um, uh, at any time, the certified unit can change and switch to one another, but it must be one at a time. For example, let's say they have choose the fixed inventory. So after completed for the three months, then they can switch to the continuous inventory. Uh, Okay, that's it. Uh, and another one related to the uh, uh, training, yeah? uh, whether uh, the internal person, whether the internal auditor or the RSPO manager, uh, scheme manager in the company will like to attend the uh, external uh, trainer, uh, endos trainer or not. So in this case, uh, it's good that both uh, attend that uh, training uh, provided by endos trainers, but uh, they themselves also can conduct after they attend the training. Yeah? That's all from my from my side. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you. So, Andreas, uh, are there questions that you would like to summarize? I haven't seen any questions in German. You can still type those questions in German uh, uh, while we run this. Andreas, yeah. Did you? Yes, yeah. hello. Yeah, I can um, hear you. <laughs> I would agree. I have not seen questions in German yet. Um, therefore, I'm still, I still would like to invite um, participants who feel more comfortable to use German language to use this opportunity. And um, yeah, please feel free to type in in German and we will try our level best to answer it also in German. Also, für die Teilnehmenden, die ja, von dieser Gelegenheit gerne Gebrauch machen möchten, ich möchte Sie nochmal herzlich da zu aufrufen, hier auch gerne Fragen äh, auf Deutsch zu stellen, so dass wir die dann auch gemeinsam noch beantworten können. Ansonsten werden äh, weitere Fragen sowieso in einem gemeinsamen Q&A-Dokument zusammengefasst, also nicht nur die Fragen, sondern auch die Antworten vor allen Dingen und ähm, auch äh, mit den Teilnehmenden geteilt. Wonderful. And perhaps you can add, uh, Andreas, how they can reach you afterwards, because uh, we will be uh, emailing them the slides and the record, the link to the recording. But is there a way that uh, these people can reach you to uh, uh, join the German forum or uh, ask questions in German? Yes, of course. <laughs> Very good hint. Um, yeah, natürlich. Um, das FONAP versteht sich hier als Dienstleister, deswegen bieten wir diese spezielle Möglichkeit eben auch an, hier in Deutsch zu kommunizieren. Also bitte ähm, ja, fühlen Sie sich äh, gerne eingeladen, uns direkt zu kontaktieren. Über unsere Webseite finden Sie die ähm, Kontaktdaten über die E-Mail sekretariat.forumpalmöl.org. Können Sie uns jederzeit erreichen, natürlich auch telefonisch und wir werden an alle Mitglieder und auch gerne darüber hinaus die Informationsmaterialien, die wir dann vom ASPO noch bekommen, gerne weiter teilen und sind natürlich auch jederzeit hier für Fragen ähm, Ansprechpartner. Also machen Sie davon Gebrauch, gerne, dass es das Phone-Up gibt. Denken Sie aber auch äh, vielleicht darüber nach, äh, wie Sie uns unterstützen können, vielleicht durch eine Mitgliedschaft, vielleicht aber auch durch Teilnahme in unseren Arbeitsgruppen die speziell zu bestimmten Fragestellungen arbeiten, die eben vor allen Dingen für zertifizierte Unternehmen relevant sind. Ja, yeah, many thanks for that, um, Inke. Okay, very good, Andreas. I'm gonna 
I see one hand uh, raised and it's uh, from Tutti. I'm gonna unmute you so you can ask your question in person. Tutti, Suriani, see you right. You had a question? Yes. Hello? Yes. Yes, can you? Yes. yes. Uh, this is my question is that the one of the indicators said that the internal audit should be competent. The person who conduct the internal audit for SCC should be competent. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. So how do you ensure, how do you determine the competency of the person in the management unit? Okay. Amina, can I give this one to you? So how do you know that the internal auditor is uh, competent to do the internal audits? Amina or Rosita? Hold on. Um, yeah, you can hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, so the standard says that the internal audits are to be conducted by personnel knowledgeable in the requirements of this standard. So means that First, the CB, the organization have to define what would be, uh, what kind of competence requirement that the, the, they, they need to have in order to make sure that these personnel are knowledgeable in conducting the, uh, are knowledgeable in the standards requirements. So that's basically um, the, the phrase in the standards, knowledgeable in the requirements of these standards. So, uh, the company can basically define either the personnel undergoing training or uh, they have work uh, in in the SCC um, uh, implementation before, you know, so it is up to the organization to define. How to, ensure, sorry, sorry. How to ensure that all stakeholders will accept the, the no knowledgeable of the person let's say there's a accreditation body cb management unit how to ensure they all agree with the determination of the management unit uh, standard for the no yeah of so the cb basically have to interview the internal auditors and based on that um, based on that um, understanding whether the in, they can basically gauge whether the internal auditor are knowledgeable or not knowledgeable. Okay, thank you very much. I see uh, the questions uh, still coming in. So uh, Lillian, I would like to suggest we keep it uh, open for, uh, let's say five more minutes uh, for yeah. people to send their questions. We will try to answer them now, but if we can't, as you see, we, uh, we are a bit slower than you guys typing these questions. Uh, uh, we will send the, all the questions and the answers uh, to the participants of today uh, after this, uh, this webinar. We need time to process and then we can share. Lillian, there's one question uh, for you to do it in, yes. um, for Latin America. And of course, uh, you're fluent in Spanish, so I'm sure that uh, you can arrange that with our Latin uh, team. Sure. sure. Uh, that has not been scheduled, right? No, yet, but uh, no. indeed, I forgot to mention at the beginning. For LATAM, obviously, there will be another one, yeah, another webinar. I just want yeah. to say one question I have seen is related with this uh, slide. So, when you go for supply chain certification, you can go for all the supply chain models as you as you want. Meaning that, for example, a meal can be IP segregated and mass balance as far as these requirements are implemented in the site. So, it's not a stick to only one supply chain model supply chain model, but as many as you need. That's it. I just wanted to say that. So I will leave uh, like two more minutes for people to put questions, more questions if they want. And uh, that's it. I Thank hope you so much, Lillian. Yes. Useful for everybody. <laughs> okay. Have a good day and stay safe. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Vielen Dank für Ihre Teilnahme. Alles Gute. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.
I Caroline, I think we can, um, but I don't see more questions coming. Okay. We'll Thank you so much. Second. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.